Thank you for joining us today for our webinar, SketchUp Pro in the Tech Classroom and Beyond. Um, my name is Mary Carnahan, and I'm the eLearning Resource Specialist with the Department of Education in the Office of eLearning, and I get the pleasure of um, arranging these webinars and oftentimes hosting them. Um, so I, um, I get to do the easy part, and um, it, I get to introduce some great presenters and then listen to the wonderful things that they're doing in their classroom. So um, today is no different. We will get to our topic in just a few minutes, but I want to do some housekeeping things. First, please keep your line muted. I know that we've had a few people that have um, followed the directions on the screen and gotten connected, so please keep your line muted um, so that we don't have the background noise. Utilize the chat box to share questions that you have for the presenters, but also share ideas. If you're already using SketchUp Pro in the classroom, um, share how you're using it or share how you think you might use it in the future. Um, this is a really great tool that we have the opportunity to um, get for free as public um, school educators. So um, we're excited to be able to share some ideas on how to use it, but um, you know, to get ideas from our presenters, but also from others attending um, the webinar today and on the call. So um, keep your line muted, use the chat for questions and comments. And I think that is all um, for my beginning screen here. So I just wanted to share a couple of things that we have going on in our office. Um, this is part, this webinar is part of the um, professional development opportunities that we are excited to be able to share um, with educators all across the, st the state. Um, that's the nice thing about doing these online things is that it doesn't matter where you um, are located, you can participate. So um, some other things that we have coming up, I'm working on a um, webinar in April, um, sometime in April on technology in the world language classroom, so be watching for that information. And I've just gotten scheduled, um, it's not even on my calendar yet on the website, but um, uh, we're going to do a webinar on digital content curation and creation in partnership with patents. So talking about making sure that um, that, that, that digital content that you're, that you're finding and that you're creating is accessible um, to all of the students that we have in our schools and our classrooms. So we're excited to have patents participating in that webinar. In, um, on May 10th, so watch for information coming out about that also. Um, Twitter, if you're using Twitter, please make sure that you're using the INE Learn hashtag to connect to other educators. Um, our two presenters today are um, two teachers that are in that um, group who are connecting and connected, um, utilizing that hashtag. Um, it's a, just a great way to connect with other educators. Um, again, sharing ideas with people that um, are across the state and sometimes out of the state. Um, so we're, um, we're happy to connect with, with all of you through that. And um, another way that we use Twitter is through our weekly Twitter chats. This week the topic is teaching writing in the digital age classroom, and that will be with two techie teachers. Um, Tiffany and Brittany, and um, that Twitter chat, our Twitter chats are always Thursday nights um, at 9 p.m. Eastern, 8 Central, um, except when that Thursday night falls on a holiday. So those are the only, typically the only exceptions. So um, we have different topics each week, so join in those um, low pressure uh, Twitter chats. They're a great way to um, dive into Twitter chats. Another professional development opportunity that we are in the middle of right now, but it's not too late to join. We do three book clubs a year, um, and we are in the middle of our, or we're about three quarters of the way done with our winter book club. We're reading Launch by John Spencer and A.J. Giuliani. And um, again, it's not too late to join in if you're interested in um, jumping into that conversation and, and uh, getting some some professional development and also some PGPs, feel free. You can catch up on the book and go back to the beginning of the, the blog conversation and, and just jump in and, and uh, join each of those week's conversations. Or we will be doing our next book club will be this summer. I believe we'll be starting the first full week of June. Um, we're working on picking that book right now. So 
if you're interested in that professional development opportunity. Again, we share all of these on our website and on Twitter. So if you're following us at INE Learn, you will see all of these opportunities and maybe more. And I neglected to include um, on with our professional development opportunities, we have announced the Summer of E-Learning um, locations and conferences for the summer. Those are scattered throughout the state, so you should be able to find one that's nearby. Um, and they are all very reasonably priced. They're all um, either free or um, I think $20, $25 or less. I don't know if any of them, any of them are 50, but they're all um, inexpensive nearby. Um, that information is on our website, and I'll share that link here in just a little bit also. But those are just great opportunities to stay close to home and to see some nationally known speakers. And also, you'll get to see some great educators um, that are just right here in our state who are doing some phenomenal things. So we encourage you to, to take advantage of those. And now on to our topic at hand, um, SketchUp Pro. Um, like I said, we're excited about the opportunity from SketchUp to get the uh, SketchUp Pro, or SketchUp is free. SketchUp Pro is not, but through a grant through SketchUp, um, it is free for public schools in the state. So um, I assume that everybody on the call is already using this, um, and that's how you heard about it, but maybe you are new to it. And I will share the website that you can use to um, register with me to get that um, to get that um, that free subscription to SketchUp Pro. As I said, it is free to public schools. That is the grant that we've received from SketchUp that they offer. Um, if if you are with a private school or you know somebody who's interested in a private school or that's from a private school. They do, I believe, offer some discounted pricing, and you can contact SketchUp on that. But, um, but today we want to talk about SketchUp Pro, and I'm happy to have Matt and Seth join us. Um, I believe they did a webinar for us last year, and we've had quite a few new people who have shown interest in SketchUp Pro, so I wanted to get them back on and just share how they're using it in, in their classrooms and at their schools, and also um, they've got some ideas. Um, like the, the, the title of the webinar says, to use it across the content areas. So I'm going to turn things over to Matt and Seth, and I'm going to let them introduce themselves and um, jump into the content. And it's going to be a little messy here for a second as I change um, Matt to the presenter. And as we're going through the presentation, make sure that you share questions in the chat, and um, make sure you choose to send to everyone so that everybody can see your questions. And so, Matt, you should have presenter rights. And um, if y'all can unmute and get started. Unmuted. Can you hear me all right? I can. Can you hear me okay? Yes. All right, perfect. Okay, uh, like Mary said, my name is uh, Matthew Zerlecki. I'm the technology integration specialist here. At Concord Community Schools, uh, located in Elkhart, Indiana, about as far north here in Indiana as you can get. Um, I'll, we have a slide later that Seth will kind of introduce himself, but I would be very remiss if I did not uh, mention him now that he has been a fantastic partner. Uh, as Mary said, we did this last year, um, and it was fantastic working with him, and it's great working with him again to uh, kind of update these and see what new things he's doing. and you're able to do with SketchUp um, as we go forward and, again, looking at it in ways that we can do it uh, throughout the curriculum, throughout school, throughout everything. Um, all right, Mary, can you advance the slides or can I do it? Um, you can. What you'll need to do is share your presentation. So if you go to the Quick Start tab, you can share your presentation, and then you can control it. Uh, share screen. Okay, so I'm on the screen. Oh, perfect. All right, so I can just share it from here. All yeah. right, so let's see what this looks like. Okay, so let me, uh, this URL um, will allow you, if you want to take notes, you can make a copy of the presentation. That way all the links and everything will be live for you. Um, so we encourage you to do, both Seth and I encourage you to do that. Um, again, I said, my name is uh, Matthew Jalecki. 
Um, I'm the, this is the first year for me being the technology integration specialist. For the eight years before that, I taught engineering design in the digital media course for junior high school. Um, as you can see here by some of the pictures on here, we got to do some very, very cool things over the years, um, including we launched a weather balloon to outer space. Um, again, our digital media core did not only live announcements for the junior high school, but we did videos across the uh, district for different things, for like district-wide safety initiatives. Uh, we live streamed graduation last year, um, so a lot of cool things. Uh, there's some of my contact information. I also hold a degree from Ball State University in technology education. Um, I mentioned this last time, and I don't know if Mary was going to mention it at the end, but the Indiana Learning Connection is a fantastic, fantastic resource uh, for all of you. For If you're looking for support, classroom ideas, technology initiatives across the state, this is a fantastic place to go. And I criticize myself. There's many, many times I should go here. Uh, when I'm looking for things and I don't think of it first, and I probably should, okay? Um, the next one, I know Mary said she was going to share this later. Well, I'm sharing it now. Um, at the top left, there's a request to get the licensing information. Um, so if you fill that Google form out, it goes directly to Mary, and then she can forward you the information you're going to need to, to get this licensing information for your school. And uh, as a note, some of you that may have it, um, the 2017 version is out, so if you had the old license and you're still using the 2015 version, here is a way to update that and get the 2017 information. There's also a link to the full grant information through SketchUp. Um, again, here's a link directly to SketchUp where you can get all kinds of information, but again, I wanted you to have that. Um, first, the if you're not familiar with SketchUp, and it looked like several of you looking through the chat um, are familiar with SketchUp, they have amazing, simple videos that not only you can use to demonstrate and initiate the content with your students, that they can use. As the longer I had done this, um, I had gotten to the point specifically with like eighth grade students that here are the videos and provided a task for them instead of me doing really any formal instruction. Um, and so these videos are fantastic and I highly recommend if you do nothing else that you put them in a repository, a Google Drive folder somewhere, links in Google Classroom or Canvas or whatever learning management system you're using um, and make them available to your students. Um, Okay, SketchUp also has an extensive YouTube video library, not only with just the help videos, but also um, project ideas, videos of like what I would consider higher end use um, that are being done with SketchUp that again, you can use maybe as demonstrations or other things for your students. Okay, um, now I'll get to the practical, um, how I would use it in the classroom and how I did. Now, before we got to the computers, I still like to do a little handwork, as I call it, um, and I wanted them to understand the rules of drawing. So instead of just sticking them at the computer and having them try and figure out um, the different aspects and the different, different X and Y and Z axis, we would do um, simple drawings of Legos. And again, I like Legos because they're a simple manipulative they can hold them in their hand. Um, and we started with just plain graph paper. We, we didn't get rulers out. We created a scale based on squares on the graph paper. So again, if you have younger students and you don't, like kindergarten, first, second grade, that you don't want to be doing, um, you know, quarter inch, eighth inch, and trying to calculate exact measurements or metric, um, you can just count like, okay, this Lego is four squares wide by two squares tall. And that's exactly what we did. We then took these hand drawings um, and used isometric graph paper. And again, you can Google isometric graph paper to get that. Um, and then we laid out the Legos. And the first thing we did was a simple one piece. And then I created a five piece Lego. And again, the students can create their own. You can just give them random couple pieces of Legos. Or I had fixed five piece Lego that they had to draw, and this was it. 
So after we did it by hand, I had them create using SketchUp their one pin Lego um, in SketchUp. And then here's an example of the five piece Lego that we had them do. Now, I will differentiate, I'll get to level two in a minute, but when we did it with level one in the first kids, um, like the lower age levels, I wasn't so much worried that they had exact measurements. I was looking for, is it proportionally correct? And so when you start SketchUp, for example, you'll have a little person, little guy in the window, and we used him if we were using larger objects, or as you can see on this Lego, is the four pin Lego half of the eight pin Lego? Are all the eight pin Legos the same width, length, height? Okay, and they're not exact, but I want the kids to start it understanding perspective, proportion, relation to different things. Are all the sizes the same? And we could do that, okay? Um, we also, I could also incorporate SketchUp into different Lego activities. And for example, here's one that I did where they actually had uh, an orthographic drawing, okay, a multi-view drawing. And there's pictures of the front, side, and top view of this object. And so they were given the opportunity to build it based on those drawings. So again, we went backwards from, okay, we drew this. Now could you actually build something from one of those drawings, okay? Now, um, create houses and other things. So we gave them a list of expectations for their houses. Um, so it had to have two windows. One window had to be round. It had to have a one minimum door. It had to have a pitched roof. Um, et cetera, et cetera. And also, again, with the lower age students, you can use it, the person that's in the drawing, basically as your measuring stick, and you could say to the students, okay, the house needs to be proportional around this person. So if the doorway you made in the house, I'm not gonna be able to fit, that's not proportionally correct. Or if the doorway is six times as tall as the person, is that a doorway at your house? Is that how it looks? Does, does that make sense on your drawing? Okay, again, here are some other examples of the individual Legos that students made. Um, when we get to level two, then I did require exact dimensions. I mean, to the tenth of a millimeter. So when I say exact, I mean exact. And how we constructed this was, I gave them drawings of the exact dimensions of a Lego. And some of the dimensions are missing, like I call that strategically missing, so that they had to figure out some of these distances when they made their Lego. So they could either do it by plotting and putting um, axes down and measuring from the axes, or they could take these drawings and calculate the math. Because one thing, for those of you that are familiar with SketchUp, you'll know you can type in an exact radius and that's how it's gonna look for on a circle, okay? So they were able to calculate those dimensions from the drawings that I gave them, and then they were able to create a single one-piece one Lego that's eight pin. After they completed that, the next project that we went to was they were allowed to create a custom Lego, and I had them make the Lego with a slight break in it, okay, so that you had to have like this one, this is an L or we made an H or an M or something um, because I had the luxury, I had a 3D printer. Again, most of you don't have a 3D printer, um, but if you do, I had them make a custom Lego in SketchUp. Again, the dimensions had to be exact. Um, and so then we could turn around on our 3D printer and print one out. And the great thing about using Legos, one, like I said, uh, a lot of people have them. They're a great manipulative that they can hold in their hand and use um, while they're doing a drawing or while they're working on the computer. And when I printed them out, I have a, an exact jig. I can take a real Lego and line it up with their Lego and see if they made any mistakes, if the height of the pins, uh, the distance between the pins, the diameter of the pins, et cetera, et cetera, was accurate. Did they make a mistake somewhere in their drawing 
And then by using a real Lego and comparing it to the one we printed out, we were able to go back and find those mistakes. Um, here are some drawings that I had, and these are junior high students. So don't think these are like advanced students that have been taking CAD forever and they've been, you know, using the software for months and months and months. Uh, this student made it, and this is probably three weeks total. So our class periods are 45 minutes. So after about, you know, 8, 10, 12 class periods, this student was able to make a uh, SketchUp drawing of uh, our junior high school. Okay? So when we talk about cross-curricular uses, okay, um, here are some examples of those. So on, if I'm in a science class, instead of using, um, you know, colored paper, pencil, et cetera, to make the diagram of a plant cell, I can use SketchUp and make a very unique, accurate, color-coded uh, diagram of a plant cell. Or um, I can make uh, the solar system and try and get it proportionally correct and accurate, and I can make the rotations of the planets around the sun, and I can do all those things. Or I can make a diagram of a city or things like that that I can actually use in like a social studies class. So instead of, okay, draw this Indian reservation, I can go and make a very accurate representation of an Indian reservation. The other thing, which I don't have a picture of, okay, is I can use this as a story starter, or I can use it as a depiction of the story I wrote. And the one thing, no matter what teacher you talk to, whether that's kindergarten through senior level teacher, they're always looking for something to get the students to motivate to write, okay? What can I use to have the students to be writing, uh, create ideas, all those types of things. And you're gonna see here in a little bit on the 3D warehouse, and I know Seth's gonna um, comment on that as well, that I can just pull different things in. I mean, I can pull Justin Bieber in, I can pull in the Empire State Building, I can pull in uh, you know, the Eiffel Tower, and then I can also pull in a bunch of characters. So I can pull in Godzilla, I can pull in a dog, I can pull in a gorilla, and so now I've got this drawing of here's my story, like here's my story starter. And then I can take a picture of that, then I can move all the characters around in my SketchUp, and here's the beginning of, or the middle of my story uh, where the action took place. And then I could create another drawing where this is the resolution of my story. So again, cross-curricular. Here's a way that I can use this either as pre-writing or as, an, as a uh, visual demonstration of the writing that I did. Uh, another thing that I was able to do is try and demonstrate to the students that I had um, how SketchUp was work, used in the real world. Like, is this a skill that you're actually going to need once you graduate from high school? And I continue to tell them, if you look at computer coding, CAD, and design, those are really, really the skills that they're going to need when they graduate. So how can I show them? Well, in my neck of the woods here, Janus Motorcycles, they have several different custom motorcycle lines that they make, and they make them from bottom up, like all the parts they make. And they use SketchUp exclusively to design everything that you see here from the seat to the handlebars to the sprockets to the brackets to the frame, you name it. And I was fortunate enough to take my level two kids on a field trip there, and they could see the motorcycles being assembled and you know, how they're using CAD to make these decisions and design and produce these parts, okay? Um, for maybe some high-end CAD users that have, have experience with like AutoCAD and Autodesk, and does SketchUp gonna be a waste of my time? Um, is this something that I should actually go to the trouble to teach my students? Um, here is, and there's a link to the article where I pulled this infographic, and you can see that the number of users in industry and out here in business, it's, it's just compounding and compounding and compounding. And again, it's kind of the Google effect. Google is giving uh, Google apps to students for free in hopes that when they graduate from school, these, this is the software programs and the applications that they're gonna use. SketchUp is doing the same thing. So when they get out in business and they get out in their careers, hey, I need to design something, I want to design something, what software should I use? Oh yeah, there's this SketchUp program that I use that's free 
I'm going to go get that. Okay. And then I provided some video examples of like just 3D modeling. So how could I show the students, okay, why would I ever use this? Well, they don't, might not use SketchUp exactly, but they're using programs with the same rules, same expectations, same understanding, and same skill level to do all of the 3D modeling in all of your video games, in all of the movies, in all of it. So here's an example of that. A um, couple other places I would point you to, the 3D warehouse that I mentioned, um, it's unlimited. What you can pull into your models as you create them that has already been created. Uh, Lucas Oil Stadium, there's a fantastic one. I mean, he's got it down to the seats and the diagrams on the field, the sky, I mean, it's, it's amazing. Also, there's a very active Google Plus community that if you're ever looking for ideas or where I could use this, again, if I'm a language arts teacher, is there an example of somebody actually using it out there? And yes, there are. Okay, I think I'm done. Um, so this is now where Seth will take over and I'll try and hopefully take over the chat and answer some questions either on something I said or something Seth is pointing out um, as we're going through this. All right. Hello? I can hear you. Hi, Seth. Okay. Hey, do, you, do you have the presentation open? Can I make you the presenter? Um, I... Or do you... If you don't Go have it, second. I can... Okay. Yeah, here we go. And then I just hit um well, I'm changing you to the presenter. And so now you should Yep. You got it. All right. I'm let me fast forward. <laughs> All right, everybody. I hope everybody's having a great day. All right, there I am. Okay. Um Thank you, Matt, for that great introduction, and Mary also. Um, I do love working with both of you. Um, I wish I wish Matt was a little closer, but uh, just being over there in Elkhart, uh, wish we could collaborate more in person. Um, uh, Mary mentioned uh, all the great opportunities in the summer of e-learning. I want to second that. Those are great conferences. Um, and then this summer, we just announced at South Bend that we're having our conference called EdTech in the Bend. Um, so you can follow us on Twitter, and our website um, is just launched the other day. Um, so my name is Seth Ponder. Uh, you can see I've got my family of uh, three boys that are lots of fun each day. I teach Project Lead the Way up here at South Bend Riley High School. Um, I teach Introduction to Engineering Design, and I also teach uh, Digital Electronics. Uh, this year I have the opportunity to teach a tech technology class called Computers and Design where we just kind of introduce all kinds of CAD software to the students. Um, so these students have had opportunities to use Inventor and AutoCAD, um, and then we just kind of are wrapping up SketchUp. Um, SketchUp is just hugely popular with the students. They love it. Um, part of the reason is because of the warehouse and just kind of the ease of it. Um, I also want to mention that I'm part of, there's like a middle bluish green sticker that is our Bowman Creek Education Foundation up here in South Bend, Indiana. And uh, I'm part of a group of teachers around the state. We call ourselves the EdTech Heroes. Um, we just geek out about educational technology um, and just love to share it. So, kind of going on to the next slide. Um, the, my, my plan is to share just kind of ideas that all classrooms can use, not just like my high school freshmen and sophomores, um, but also I have the opportunity that I do what we call um, the Hamilton High Tech Hornets Club, which is a group of first and second graders, um, kind of a way to kind of give back to my kids' elementary school. Um, and so I go in there with a group of high school students from Riley, and we share just different ways to use technology in the classroom, and everything from introducing these first and second graders to coding, so also CAD and SketchUp is kind of our way to do that. Um, and then also, I just love collaborating with other classes. I tell the students, if they can um, 
kill two birds with one stone by doing a project for another class in my class, I'm all about that. Um, so actually, that just brought up a recent conversation I had with our marketing teacher. He wants to do a marketing class uh, project with a, a stadium, like a football stadium. And so uh, next year, I encourage him to use SketchUp and um, work with some of our students, and hopefully we can do some cross-curriculum um, projects with that. All right. Um, Kind of, you know, obviously we've, we've got a CAD software here with SketchUp, so the simple math things can just be everything from measurement to uh, the axis and all of the different um, formulas and rotations and revolves that our students are trying to get the concept of learning. Um, by using Legos, like Matt was talking about, is a great way to do that, and also getting it on the computer and seeing it rotate. and. Uh, drawing the scales is very helpful. Um, when we introduce this with first and second graders, you know, the first thing we do is we draw a square. And then all of a sudden we use the push-pull tool, and then they've got a prism. Um, and then we draw another square on it, and then they've got a door and a window. And so within about 10 minutes, these first and second graders are designing their own house. And then, like, my favorite part of it, when they do a circle, and then they, you know, extrude that circle, all of a sudden they're saying, hey, I've got an above-ground pool. And then 10 minutes later, these cool kids are using the warehouse to put a shark in their pool. Um, and, you know, they're loving every bit of it. Um, for our classes, you can, you know, design some logos. Um, here are some ones that my students have done in the past. Um, you know, we've got the Call of Duty and the Facebook and, and the Riley Wildcats. And like Matt mentioned, you know, you can take these um, into – uh, your 3D printer by just exporting them to uh, STL files. Um, this one is a house design that we did in my class a couple years ago. The student, uh, and I got to give credit to Michael, he did a great job on this. But he simply took a picture, a couple pictures with his cell phone, brought them to class the next couple days. Um, he also uh, used Google Street View to help design his house. Um, and, and so the top right picture is a picture, I believe, from a cell phone, and then you can see the design that he worked on. Um, this was when he was a sophomore, and, you know, this project took about two or three weeks to do. Um, uh, this project right here is uh, one that we just recently did in my class. Uh, Riley has a... Um, so I, I'm at Southern Riley, so we have a couple empty lots right across the street that have um, that have just grass in them. And so the two pictures on the right are from just um, using the Add Location button, which you'll find on the top of your Google SketchUp. And you can grab a section of the, um, the satellite view, and then the students started drawing different types of um, – parking lots in these empty lots um, so that we can add a designated location for student and parent, like drop-off and pick-up um, and visitor parking and things like that that um, we have right now on the north side of the building, which is kind of a hike from the door. Um, so these are some things that we're kind of um, working with uh, to give ideas for our maintenance and also our administration. Um, the really nice thing about, and Matt brought this up, is the warehouse. Um, students, there's already, you know, street lights on the warehouse and, um, uh, like, cross, crosswalk and um, all kinds of stop lights and stop signs. And so the students started just importing those from the uh, street view, and they're already drawn to scale, which is the great thing about it. Um, and they're really detailed. These people who add these things to the warehouse are just do a spectacular job. Um, when you want to incorporate like a social studies or a language arts class, um, here's an example. Again, one of my students, um, I do a project called The Big Idea, where they take, you know, some kind of dream house that they might have or a historical landmark. And Anthony here did the, um, the Lincoln Memorial. Um, I also encourage students you know, who might be studying a certain book to then draw the setting of their story so that they can use that in the presentation for their uh, language arts class. 
Um, you can also, you know, bring in some story reconstruction. Um, one thing we did for, like, the migrant education is, you know, we start half of the story, and then we have kids design, you know, the second half of the story or the setting there and kind of take the – take and have them finish the story so that they are incorporating the language arts skills um, with their writing also. Um, so we're here to talk about SketchUp Pro, but I want to also bring up this new opportunity that's called My SketchUp Beta. Uh, Mary does a great job, you know, once you fill out that form, Mary does a great job forwarding you the information so that you can load it. But I don't know if you're like me where, like, you find something over the weekend, you're like, oh, that'd be cool. I want to start that on Monday, right? Um, this SketchUp Beta kind of gives you that opportunity to test drive. Um, the SketchUp, um, it is all cloud-based, uh, and then you don't have to wait for your IT department to load it onto your school computers. I, now, I would encourage you to get SketchUp Pro on your computers if you kind of take off from this beta version because um, you know, it just recently launched this, and it definitely doesn't have all of the features as uh, SketchUp Pro, but it is a great way to kind of introduce the um, the software, um, you know, since it's cloud-based or web-based, um, it, it does work with, you know, your Chromebooks and things like that where you might not have a hard drive. So I know a lot of us around the state are using Chromebooks nowadays. Um, and then, like, kids love it. Um, I, like I said, I use it with first and second graders, and I use it with ninth and tenth graders. Um, the SketchUp beta, you know, all of a sudden, these first and second graders are going home and uh, loading it at their, you know, loading to the website and loading it and showing their parents kind of what they learned. And um, so it's a lot of fun to incorporate and bring in more um, of the parent stakeholders in uh, our classrooms. Um, so Matt mentioned you can bring this in as 3D printing, and I want to share some augmented reality with you. So there's a, an app on your uh, phones or your devices called Augment. Um, so I've got a little logo on it on the bottom right. But um, you can sign in. You can export your SketchUp designs, and then you can have it augmented reality, use augmented reality to kind of project it on there. Um, kind of one of, my, one of my stories is my wife wanted me to build a window box that goes above the window. So I used SketchUp to design it to make sure that's what she wanted it to look like. And then what I did was uh, I put it on augmented reality where I used my phone to then uh, kind of uh, use it to um, simulate it on our wall right above our window. And I turned to her and I said, hey, check this out. Is this what you want it to look like? And after she, you know, called me a nerd, she said, yes, now just build it. Um, so it's a great way to kind of use communication and, and – um, We've also used um, these augmented realities with um, um, Google Cardboards also. Um, so this is a way to kind of bring in, you know, if you want to use Augment and talk about a location such as Washington, D.C., but you can't afford, you know, the bus ride there, uh, this could be a really cool way to kind of bring in field trips into your classroom and then have even the students design it um, and project it on it. Um, before I kind of bring any questions in or anything, I also want to mention, you know, Matt mentioned the YouTube channels um, that use it. I have shown the, the tutorials probably for the last shoot, eight or ten years. They are great. Um, they do a good job explaining it. And also, if, if you're like a kind of a woodworker like me, a hobbyist, um, Woodworkers on YouTube are starting to use SketchUp because it's free and because it's open source. So um, if you get into kind of hobbies, you'll also find that SketchUp is becoming very popular there. Um, SketchUp also has challenges about once a year for students or hobbyists. I just saw the other day that their challenge right now is, you know, this tiny house um, project where there's even TV shows about these tiny houses that people are living in. Um, and SketchUp is having a tiny house challenge where you can design or your students can design um, a tiny house, um, kind of like on a trailer bed, kind of RV looking thing. And since Matt and I are in like the RV capital of the world, uh, this works perfectly with our. You're kidding. Uh, <laughs> so, um, yeah, so this is kind of the conclusion. We've got uh, the slide up is Matt's Twitter and my Twitter account, uh, feel free to 
follow and and bounce ideas off of us. Please share how you're using it. Um, and then you also have our email and even our phone numbers um, on there. If you have any questions, we are happy to help. So, all right. Let me see if I can give the stop sharing back to all right. All right, Mary, are you there? Hello? Hello? I am. I'm just watching for okay. did you just say Bueller? <laughs> <laughs> okay. My slides are not advancing. Do you see my slideshow now? I see the slide with presenters. Hmm. It's not moving forward, so I'm not sure why. Um, so, yeah, if anybody has any questions, please. Um, oh, it looks like there's one. Do you export to STL? Matt says yes. Yes, you can. And then also SketchUp. Um, Steph, help me out here. What they have? It's a 3D model. There's also uh, MakerBot has a different extension, and I can't remember what it is top of my head. But SketchUp will export it to that as well. Excellent. Anyone else with questions for Matt and? Steph, I love the ideas. Um, I, I love to hear how, because when you think of like a CAD software, you think of um, higher level. You think of at least high school kids, maybe junior high. But I love hearing, um, I loved it last time when you shared it, Seth, and this time again, um, that you're using it with first and second graders. Um, that they're, you're, you know, not too young. You just start introducing it to them and they um, jump right in it. Do you still need a plug-in for it to export to STL? No, it's SketchUp has it. No, you do not. Yeah, with the pro version, it's quite a bit easier than the free version. Yep. Yeah, I think we just kind of – yeah, so we're kind of going back to Mary's point about using first and second graders. When I, use it, when I introduce it with first and second graders, you know, we just talk about scale and proportion, and I'm not as, you know, I'm doing it for fun so the kids aren't getting a grade. And so encouraging the fun aspect of it and the introduction is, is I think, key. Um, whereas when I use it at the high schools, you know, at the very, maybe the first project or so, we're just talking about proportion and scale. But after that, it's all about, you know, making sure your dimensions are correct, uh, talking about the dimensions of doors and windows and, um using it as, you know, an introduction to, um, you know, apartment and, and house design. And the other thing about the math, too, when I mentioned about, you know, giving them a manipulative, like a Lego or something, uh, and I know Seth does, too, with the lower grade. I mean, you know, math beats X and Y into these students' heads over and over and over and over and over again forever. And the Z axis is, in a lot of ways, uh, confusing for them. And so to just see that three-dimensional shape and be able to manipulate it, uh, the one joke that I always loved is, like, they'll do the 3D Lego in CAD, or in SketchUp, excuse me. They get all done, and they go, Mr. Jockey, Mr. Jockey, I'm done, I'm done. And all I do, I don't say anything to them. I just walk over, grab the Lego, turn it upside down, and they look at me with this blank stare, and I go, yeah. We're not done yet, are we? They go, nope. Then they got to figure out how to do the bottom, you know, the holes on the bottom of the Lego. And so just that understanding of all the sides, all parts of it, we can draw this. Okay. And can it be used on iPads, Carrie would like to know? Uh, the only version that works on the iPad is the beta version uh, that Seth mentioned at the end of his portion of the presentation, the, the cloud-based version. You cannot install SketchUp on an iPad. Maybe someday they'll have an app for that, but for now, they do not. Okay, any other questions?
Okay. We'll give everybody another minute or so to um, see if they have any last-minute questions. And I'll just, um, again, think think for another minute. And, and if you come up with a question, please share it. But I'll just jump to this um, while we're giving you all a last minute to think. But um, there are lots of different ways to keep in contact with us. I shared some links as we went through the presentation. Um, I shared the Summer V Learning. I shared the link to um, the uh, to to register to to fill out the application for SketchUp Pro um, if you're a public school representative, and that is something that has to be installed. So if you're a teacher um, on this webinar now, that might need to go to your um, building tech people. Um, so just keep that in mind. But I know some people who are in a computer classroom. Um, take care of their own installing. So, um, But the, everything that I shared can be accessed through our website, which is just doe.in.gov slash e-learning. Um, pretty simple, and, and all of our information is there. So please um, utilize us and the resources that we have, um, the professional development opportunities, the social media where um, we try to reach everybody on social media where they are. So. Um, we are all over the place on social media, too. And I don't see any more questions coming in. So um, like Matt said, they shared their um, email addresses and their Twitter handles. So um, if you are using um, SketchUp Pro, especially if you're new, um, definitely reach out to Seth and Matt. They're great resources. They've been using this for a long time um, and are happy to share with other people. And we, we are lucky to have them and their um, knowledge and their willingness to share. So um, it looks like there are no more questions. So I will say thank you to Seth and to Matt um, for sharing with us today, for taking an hour plus the, the prep time to share with us today um, with all of you all. And um, PGP, somebody just asked about PGPs. Yes, um, we do award a PGP for the hour spent. I will email out as soon as I'm able to access the participant list. I will send those emails out um, as long as um, I have correct email addresses. Um, I get those sent out um, as soon as I'm able to download that list. So that will probably be um, by the end of the day tomorrow that I email that information out. So with that, I will say thank you to Seth and Matt again. and sign off from here, and um, hopefully we will see you all on a Twitter chat or next uh, one of the next few months on um, one of our e-learning lab webinars. So thank you all very much, and have a great evening.